Ohio State researchers recently spoke to the public about the work they've been doing for the past four years to update the tri-state fertilizer recommendations. Steve Coleman is an Ohio State soil fertility specialist. He says those recommendations include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur. The talk today had five main points. The first was that we had conducted, done a tremendous amount of work with the help of a lot of folks in the ag community to conduct these on-farm strip trials. Second was looking at uh, trials in maintenance range. That's the tri-state current recommendations uh, that we just don't have very many times, many, very many instances where we saw yield responses to P or K fertilizer when they were in the maintenance range. So that was the second point. The third point was that a few, we have a few long-term phosphorus and potassium trials in the state, across the state, three of them, and that uh, they started in the maintenance range and they were able to supply enough P and K to those crops over several years before we start seeing yield increases. So this idea that we don't need to spoon feed uh, crops is an important message I think that we need, to, we need to tell. The fourth one is that our nitrogen recommendation rates have uh, been updated. So those are out and ready to go. That was uh, this spring. That's based on an economic model, trying to maximize farmer profit, not trying to maximize the, the total yield, not, not maximize productivity, but actually maximize uh, profitability. And then finally, the fifth one is that uh, grain nutrient removal rates are actually dropping. In other words, for every unit or every bushel of corn and soybean and wheat that we're pulling off fields today, we're actually removing less P2O5, less K2O, less nitrogen. So another way to look at that is that plants are becoming more efficient with the amount of fertilizer that we feed them. So that's a good story to tell, yeah. You know, I think one of the main points is that uh, there's some things, of course, that have changed. A lot has changed in the last 20 years since the tri-states have been released. With this newest round that we're working on right now, uh, the story hasn't changed too much in terms of what our, uh, our levels need to be uh, at to, you know, to, to grow good crops. We don't need 50, 60, 70 part per million phosphorus to grow 250 bushel corn. We can do that at 15 to 30, and that's really all the, all the data that we have is there. So I think that's a really important message. And uh, knowing that, uh, you know, being mindful of, of inputs and thinking that uh, fertilizer is, of course, a large input cost, but we can uh, be efficient with our inputs, our resources, and actually uh, make a good profit doing that. Sure. Well, the beauty of what we've done, in my opinion, is that these are primarily on-farm trials. So 90-plus uh, percent of them are on private farmland, okay? And most of those are large strip trials. So whatever that means, sometimes they were 60-foot uh, long or 60-foot wide rows. Sometimes they were longer than that. It, we took all shapes and sizes, um, it, but it's, you know, not small university plots. We believe there's value in those as well. We understand that some farmers are skeptic of those, but these are primarily on farmers' fields in large strips is what, what we've done the work with. Over 300 on-farm field trials have been conducted in the process to update those fertilizer recommendations. Also recently introduced was the On-Field Ohio Phosphorus Calculator from Ohio State. For the Ohio Ag Debt, I'm Joel Penorwood.